Alright, that's enough of that, so, hey, what's going on everyone, it's me, Mr. Mario, and if you are playing any type of backed up or burned games such as this, as you can see, this is my burned copy of Melee, here's my original, and you might experience, if you're playing this on a GameCube, that your games might not work properly, or you might have some skipping, some slowdown, some freezing, discrete errors, or just straight up clicking like that that you're not supposed to hear. Well, that means that you need to pot tweak your laser. Now, I have already done it on this GameCube, but I didn't bring down the resistance enough. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you all how to do it here. So let's go ahead and remove this. So I'm going to unplug everything and take the GameCube apart. If you need a guide on how to do that, I'm going to have a great tutorial linked down below uh, because I'm mainly going to be showing you all the potentiometer on the disk drive itself. So that's what we're going to be accessing. But the GameCube's old enough where there's plenty of guides available showing how to properly take it apart. So anyways, let's take apart a GameCube and let's access the back of the disk drive. All right, so now that you have your GameCube taken apart, you should have it down to this point where you have the optical drive removed. And there's gonna be a back plate here. There's gonna be six screws that you will need to remove. Take those off so you can remove the back plate. And this is what you should be seeing at this point now when you have it taken apart to this point, uh, you need to look for this little piece right here. This is the potentiometer, otherwise known as the pot that we're going to be tweaking here. This is going to control how much resistance you are going to be allowing to the drive so or to the laser. So essentially, the lower resistance means your laser will get more power. The higher resistance means it's going to get less power. And for this, we need to lower the resistance because GameCube games, like original ones, can play just fine if you do not do a pot tweak for the most part. However, if you're going to be playing any type of backup discs, you will most likely need to do that. Sometimes you don't need to, but most of the time you will in this case. Uh, so right here, I just want to kind of show you all a bit clear. It's going to be this piece. Just look for that. Now you will also need a multimeter for this, so when we're going to be performing this, we'll need a very small screwdriver, I'm just going to use a small flathead, and a multimeter. And what you'll need is, I'm showing this off camera right now mostly, but you're going to need your two leads, your black lead, your red lead. So the way I do this is, if you're looking at it from this angle, you're going to put the black lead right there, and then you're going to take the red lead, and there's going to be two points, there's one up here, one down below. You kind of want to get that there. And what I'd recommend doing also, just to get a little bit of practice, do this and kind of get your footing and your feel down right and make sure your multimeter is giving off some numbers. So I'm showing you all this up close right now because this is what I'm going to be doing. Take this right there, take the red one, kind of move it down there. That's what I'm going to be doing because now I'm going to zoom out. So I'm going to be showing you all myself working with the multimeter. I just want to show you all everything up close so when you see this zoomed out, you'll know what I'm doing. All right, so now when you're all set up, let's go ahead and take our multimeter and you're going to need to put it into ohms or resistance mode of some kind. So my multimeter does a lot of this stuff automatically, thankfully. Um, you might have one that's going to be more manual where you have to pick which exact resistance you're gonna do. I'll show you right here. So that's what I'm gonna pick. As you can see, everything comes up. And now, I'm going to show you all what I'm doing here. So, get the black point and get the red one. Wait a bit. As you can see, that's it. It's bringing up on mine 0.25. Okay, it's kind of going all over the place. This is why uh, I think I was slipping a little bit on there. But let's see. There we go. All right, that sounds about right. So let's round it down, let's say 250. Now, as you can see, that is 0.254, but there's also a K and a ohm symbol right there. So that means this is 0.254 kilo ohms. If we do a little bit of math, that means that's going to be 254 ohms of resistance. 
So you're going to have to do that. You're going to have to make sure you're going to get something in, you know, full ohms or if it's like kilo ohms, like what we're getting right here, you're going to have to do the math on that. So take this number, whatever's showing here, multiply it by a thousand. That's how many ohms of resistance we're getting. So 254 ohms right now. Uh, the safe range for a GameCube laser, if we're going to be doing this, is 150 to 250. So as you can see, I am just above that range. I thought it was going to be okay. Evidently, it's not going to be okay. So there's now two ways of doing this. Um, the proper way of doing it is we're going to now, of course, use the multimeter and turn it down a little bit at a time. You need to turn this left. Turn it down a little bit at a time and test it. And you want to get it to the point where you can turn it down just enough so that it plays games properly, but you're not going to be completely burning out the laser. Because if you set this to like three ohms resistance, that thing is going to burn out. So you don't want to set it to under 150. Some people do say, you know, down to 130 as a last resort. I wouldn't even recommend that. Just don't go under 150. Another thing is too, when you do this, you might be alarmed and you're going to see like, this GameCube was originally like 660 ohms. GameCube lasers can normally be quite high in resistance. So that's why it's, it's okay if you're going to lower it quite a bit. The non-recommended way of doing it, which is what I've done before, is to just manually do this without a multimeter at all, but manually do it and just turn it down and turn it down and keep testing it until it works. That's not going to be as accurate. On top of that, you might set it down too low to the point where the laser is going to blow. So that's not going to be the recommended method. This is going to be the recommended method. But anyways, let's go ahead. Now that we have this in hand, our number is going to be 254. That's what we're going with. I'm going to set it down. So you can go like 10 ohms down or 20 ohms down at a time. Um, I'm going to probably set this to around 200 and see what that does for us. All right, so when you get your bit, just go ahead, take this, and we're going to just lower this slightly. And it should turn, there we go. And just to check that it did, you can do the test again. Not even you can, you should. Let's see. So as you can see, I barely turned it, and we brought that down <laughs> quite a bit. We brought that down 60 ohms, so I'm going to actually turn it up a tiny bit. Let's see here. Something like that. Maybe. There we go. All right, let me retest this and see what we get. 208. I'm okay with that. So we went from 254 to 208. So I'm going to turn this thing off now. And now what you should do is take your back plate, go ahead, pop it back on, and partially reassemble your GameCube. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put everything back together, but I'm not going to go through the effort of putting all the screws and stuff back in yet. I just want to get it together to the point where I can test it for 5 or 10 minutes. All right, so I would say this is complete now. I have just uh, finished testing this. I've had it running for about five minutes or so. And normally just on the intro of Smash, the thing is clicking and skipping and all that whenever it has to transition between uh, different demo modes on here. But as you can hear, it's nice and quiet. You can hear the fan, you can hear the disc spinning around and the laser moving, but it's not clicking, it's not freezing, everything is playing smooth. So this GameCube I had to tweak down to 173.5 ohms. So again, this was originally before I touched it or anything, this was about 660 ohms. I brought it down to 254, that was still clicking. I tried just over 200 as you all saw, and it was still clicking. 
but the number I got here is 173.4.5. So that's why I highly, highly recommend using the multimeter for this so you can get those precise tweaks and such and you're going to make sure you're within your safe limit. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the GameCube and I would say this one has successfully been tweaked. So. I actually used this in another video where I did several modifications to this, but this is the last improvement I needed to do. It seemed to play okay for a bit, but then as I played it a bit more, uh, it was clicking. So this thing is no longer clicking. It is playing our backup games smooth as silk, thankfully, which is what we are aiming for. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you hated it, a dislike is fine as well, too. But let me know if this helped you all out.